When the Lord Jesus came, the grace of God became visible to everybody. He suffered, died and rose. He ascended into heaven. He shall soon come again. Because God is glorious. There is nothing that can even come in comparison to the greatness of who He is. doesn't have to be a stranger to you and me. You can call him Abba Father. I will never again be the same. In Jesus' name, Amen. God's power is almighty, but our faith must become ready to receive that power. God is saying, look, when you pray, I give you wisdom. I give you revelation. Why? So that you will know the hope. You will know the fullness of my blessed plan for your life. So in our prayer time, we should pump up our faith, the confidence that God will, God can, God is able. Faith produces character. Belief produces behavior. But in case there is a fall, His word will sustain you. Oh, hallelujah. My word will not come back empty in the name of Jesus. There is no enemy. There is no devil. There is no power of evil. There is nothing. If there is a believing heart, there is a God who will fulfill His word in their life. Today we celebrate as Palm Sunday in remembrance of when Jesus entered into Jerusalem before he was crucified and before he rose up again as we're going to celebrate next Sunday Easter service. Amen. Are you excited to be in God's presence? 
Come on, let's shout hallelujah. As Jesus entered into Jerusalem, people shouted Hosanna to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Today we are going to praise and worship His holy name. Let's pray, church. Dear Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day in your presence. God, it's a joy to come and exalt the name of our Savior, of our Master. Lord, we thank you for your love is more than enough for us, O oh God. And today we pray, Holy Spirit, let your presence fill this place, O oh God, Lord. Let your presence touch everyone who is joining us online, O oh God, Father, Lord. And we pray, O oh God, that your glory be revealed once again, even as we worship you. We commit the rest of the service into your mighty and loving hands. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, Amen, Amen. Come on, church. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, because you are already here in this place. We want to give you the highest praise today. Be glorified in our midst. And praise is rising, eyes are turned. When we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away. Wash away.
find strength to face the day. Missing your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna Sunday, amen. We're going to give glory unto the Lamb. You ready, church? Come on, let's give Him glory. Glory. Glory in the highest glory. To the Almighty. Glory to the Lamb of God. Glory to the living one. And I give glory. Shout it out to 
his name. You ready, church? Here we go. We glory, glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. And glory, glory, Lord. You are a mighty God. Amen. Sing it again. Glory. Glory, glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Glory, glory, Lord. You are a mighty God. You are a mighty God. All right, let's sing that. You who go down to the sea. You who live in the islands. If you live in the city, that's you and me, church. So lift your voice and sing. Glory, glory, Lord. We give you glory. We give you glory, Lord. Glory, glory, Lord. Glory, glory, Lord. You are a mighty God. Yes, you are. You are a mighty God. Come on, let's sing a new song, church. Sing to the Lord a new song. His praise to the ends of the earth. Let every nation tell it till every man has heard. Oh, oh, glory, glory, glory. Everybody, we give you glory, glory. Give him glory, 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 Lord. You are a mighty God. Sing it again. Glory, glory, Lord. Sing it. Glory, glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, 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 Lord. You are a mighty God. Amen. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad that we are part of a church where people from many languages, many tribes, many cities are together worshiping the Lord? Amen. So we are going to declare God's glory in two languages, one international and one Indian. So ready to sing with me? We're going to sing in Hawaii. All right, here we go. Nani nani la hoa. No ka nani la hoa. Nani nani la hoa. Kia kua mana loa. You want to try that once again? In Hawaii, come on. Nani nani la hoa. No ka nani la hoa. Come on, let's sing in Hindi. Mahima, Mahima. Mahima, Mahima, Eshu. Hey. Tuje hi Mahima, Eshu. Mahima, Mahima, Eshu. Tu mahan hai. Come on, you wave your hands and declare Mahima. Mahima, Mahima, Eshu. Yes. Tuje hi Mahima, Eshu. Hey. Mahima, Mahima, Eshu, tu mahan hai. Hey, hey, glory, 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 Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Glory, glory, Lord, you are a mighty God. Sing glory, glory, give him glory, church. Oh, glory, glory, Lord. We are here to give you glory, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. You are a mighty God. You are the living God. You are the only God. You are the mighty God. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna in the highest. Lift his name, oh Lord, we lift up your name With a heart full of praise We exalt it, oh Lord, my God Hosanna in the high Lord, we lift your name Lord, we lift up your name With a heart full of praise We exalt it, oh Lord, my God Hosanna in the high Salty. 
continue to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's acknowledge that it is by His love, His mercy and grace that we are carried each day. Let's welcome Him into our hearts, into our lives, in every area of our lives. We worship You, Jesus. Isaiah saw a vision, like Ezekiel saw a vision, like John saw a vision. The glory of God is here amongst us right now. And let's worship His glory, His beautiful presence, His healing, His power, His miracles. Here is in this place. Go ahead, lift your hands to Him. Adore His name. Oh, we worship You, Lord. Oh, we fill with wonder, oh Lord. Let's worship church and filled with wonder and awestruck wonder at the mention of your name. Come on, declare the name of Jesus. Jesus. 
Jesus, the name is power. Breath and living water. Such a marvelous mystery. Sing it again. Jesus, Jesus, oh. Jesus, the name is power. unto the Lamb that was slain and then rose again. We thank you for your beautiful, glorious presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Just put your hands together. Welcome, my dear Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Deepak. Shall we do the confessions before we get into the Holy Communion? I believe in the Almighty God, our Father and Creator. I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, God and my Savior. He was conceived of the Holy Spirit and born of a virgin. He suffered, died and rose again. He ascended into heaven. He shall soon come again. I believe in God the Holy Spirit who is worshipped and my guide. I believe in holy fellowship, faithful giving and service to God in this church. I believe the Holy Bible is the perfect word of God. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today, as I learn the word of God, here in my spiritual family, I am blessed, healed, and anointed for a holy and victorious living. I will never again be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Blessed Palm Sunday to all of us. Please be seated. As Brother Aaron helps pick up the volume, I want to share with you a few thoughts as we come to the Holy Communion table of our Lord and Savior, Jesus as we want to participate of the Holy Eucharist, touch of his holy body, of his holy precious blood. This morning our hearts are reminded. The Bible says in the book of Philippians chapter 2, let's read verse from 5 to verse 11. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. This morning, as we hold the elements of communion in our hands for all of you who are not yet baptized, I want this is a beautiful opportunity to make that commitment so you can partake of the Lord's table after you are baptized, after you have believed. With our eyes closed and heads bowed, shall we say, Lord, thank you that on the cross you died for me. This week, 
as the world celebrates the passion, we celebrate, we commemorate your suffering, your determination to save those who choose to believe in you. And we thank you. Bless these elements for us, Lord. This month of April, as we are calling it, a month of overcoming challenges. Give us your resurrection power to face our challenges. Like David ran to Goliath and defeated him, we want to face the challenges of our life with the power of your Holy Spirit. Bless these elements for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's eat of his holy body and drink of his precious blood together. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the gift not only of life on earth, but eternal life that you have granted on the cross. The power of resurrection that raised you from the grave which works in us, those who believe. Thank you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, ushers, as they are passing the bags for those who want to drop the cups. Appreciate your help. This week, we are getting started with the fasting prayers on Wednesday and Thursday. Wednesday and Thursday is fasting prayer. It's not, it is not a worship concert, music concert or preaching concert. It is prayer time. So come. We're going to, of course, there's going to be time of praise and worship, good preaching of God's word. But I want to pray also. And it's a time, Pastor, I can't fast. I am sick. I need to take tablets. Fasting is for those who can fast from food. But at least you can fast from mobile phone that day for some time. You can fast from screen time. You can fast from anger. You can fast from jealousy and fear. There is something you can fast from. So come with fasting and pray in the presence of God. Amen. Good Friday, of course. This year, we are doing Good Friday even in the evening. Usually, we do only in the morning, Good Friday service. But this, uh, this year, we are doing Good Friday service in the evening also. And uh, Easter Sunday, call all your friends, family, workplace, uh, your uh, you know, colleagues, your uh, friends in the college. Call all of them and come to Palace Ground. Okay? They're going to meet in Palace Ground. Tell them. The palace ground is going to have the king of kings. So, Sunday morning, 9.30 a.m., next Sunday, we are all going to meet there. We are not having services here. Uh, we are only having services in uh, palace ground, just one service, morning, 9.30. That's about next Sunday. But the Sunday after that, we are resuming all the regular services. So, that's about uh, it. And... Many times people ask me, Pastor, you never announce about offerings. You never announce about tithes. Why? That is because pulpit time, I want to spend more time preaching Jesus than talking about money. But yes, it is because this week, new financial year is starting, no? So I am saying. <laughs> Otherwise, I won't take time for all this. Yes, giving to God is very important. Giving money to God is very important. It is a part of Christian culture. It's a part of the habits of the disciples of Christ. 10% of your income, whatever it is on a monthly basis or weekly, depending on how your income comes. And uh, that is called tight. 10%. It's not tight. T-I-G-H-T. That is tight. Some people are very tight when they give. <laughs> but tight. T-I-T-H-E. That is 10% of your income. That is not a part of the law. It's a part of the grace. Uh, Melchizedek is a symbolic of Jesus, grace. He's the first one to have collected tithes from what we understand in the scripture, which was about 400 years before the law was given through Moses. So it's a, it's a scriptural commandment and a culture which everyone who walked with God practiced. So yes, 
Giving to God is important. Giving tithes is important. I feel that people who have lesser income uh, are more comfortable giving. But when sometimes they get a lot of money, then they start worrying about giving too much. That's just a sign of how much more you love the world than you love God. Uh, yeah, yeah, I was talking about you. So, uh, <laughs> then, uh, see, I, I, whenever I talk something, I talk in clarity. I don't talk in shades of anything. I talk with absolute clarity because Bible gives clarity on that topic. Giving is an act of love. It's not an act of business. In Oriental culture, when you go to a god or a goddess and you give, it's a form of bribing. It's a form of bribing to get their favor. When you give to God, it is not a form of bribing. In the Bible, you cannot bribe God because God has already given you everything freely. When you give to God money, okay. In the Bible, giving to God financially is not trying to bribe God to get God's favor. It is giving to God saying, God, I love you. This is an expression of my love for you. It is an expression of my worship for you. This is to say every blessing in my life, I believe comes from you, O God. That is the act of giving. What about offerings? Offerings is what you give above your tithes. Above your 10% of your income, what you give is called your offerings. Where should we give it? In your local church, here. This is where you give your turn. But there's another pastor who's asking money. Tell him to ask God. You are not his God. You know, let him ask God. Uh, or, oh, there's some other need. Well, that need should not become your master. Let Jesus be your master. Your tithe goes to your, uh, your God in the place where you worship, in the place where you take your communion. That is, now, if you like to go and check Google, then next Sunday, be with Google. You want to follow God's word, then next Sunday, don't be with Google, come here. But point I'm saying is, don't make Google your master, let Jesus be your master. All right. So there are very clear teachings on this. And me personally, as a, as a, my personality, I don't talk about money because from the time I started following the Lord uh, in, in full-time ministry, yes, I've gone through hardships. I've gone through a lot of pain, but I've seen God bringing me through. Uh, our church has got very big projects. You know, my friend once told me, he, he's a very close friend of mine. He's a pastor. He said, you, you know what, Pastor Johnson, you find 100 people in your church who can give one crore each and uh, just, just pray with them, call them for every monthly one meeting and you can raise 100 crores like that. Then he said, well, if you don't have 100 people who can give one crore each, find 200 people who can give 50 lakhs each. Bangalore city, there'll be people who can give at least 50 lakhs each. 200 such people you find, gather them. Then he was explaining how Rotary Club works, how other churches work, all that. So I told him, my problem is, I know somebody who's got all the 150 crores I need. So, and I told him, I said, every day I'm meeting with him and he promised me. So, you know, that's why in our church, whether you are rich or poor, you don't get a special chair. You want front chair, come early, you know. And if you don't get a chair, I call you colleague, fellow, fellowship in ministry, because I'm also standing without a chair. We leave it at that. Uh, we don't, we, just because you are wealthy doesn't mean you can cut the prayer queue. You stand in the queue like others. I know there are places where you can cut the queue based on how important you are. You can pay more money and get a VIP ticket. But here, everybody is VIP, you know. Here, those things don't make a difference because God has called us to wash everybody's feet and uh, respect everybody. That's what God has called us to do. Yeah. So, new financial year, make a commitment to be faithful to God. Pastor Johnson is never going to, none of the pastors here are going to check who is giving what, because that's between you and God. However, God does check who is giving what. Just thought you should know that part. We're going to get into God's word. Are you all happy to be in God's presence today? Hallelujah. As we study God's holy word, one of the things we should understand is God's word is not only for information, it is for transformation. 
that when we know God's word, it should bring a behavioral change in our life. In my childhood, I used to read a lot of Tintin, Asterix, and uh, Tinkle. Oh, I love Supandi jokes. I don't know if somebody understands these. Amar Chitra Katha. Okay, these were fantastic uh, 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 comic books just a few years ago in my childhood. How times have changed suddenly, huh? Things have just changed so quickly in the few last years. But, but sometimes my parents would say, don't act like that, Supandi. You're, you've, been reading, you've been reading comic books, but don't... Bec because there is a, in our childhood, there is a tendency to act like, you know, um, Mr. India. Or there is a tendency to act like that hero you saw in the TV screen. You know, they say in Tamil Nadu, after MGR released one particular movie, the very way people used to smoke changed. <laughs> because it seems the way the movie actor held the cigarette was different from how others held it. Statements like, Nan uru vati sonna, ni nuru vati sonna, all became very... <laughs> <laughs> Those movies had such an impact on people and they began to live like comics, began to live like movie stars because it had an impact on them. And one of the things that God wants us to remember is that God's word should have an impact on our lifestyle. God's word should have an impact on our thinking pattern. When you study about Samson, become more like Jesus. You just heard what I said. When you read about David, become more like Jesus. When you study from the scripture, look at how, which part of their life followed Christ's principle. And that's what you want to follow. Because we don't want to become little Davids. We don't want to become little Samsons. We don't want to become St. Peter's or St. Paul's. We want to be better reflections of Christ, our master. And that is really what, when we study God's word, we should be doing. All these palms that are over here have a beautiful story behind it. Luke chapter 9 and verse number 38. The Bible says, the people shouted saying, Hosanna, which means blessed be the king that comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory. They shouted Hosanna, Hosanna, which means blessed save now, O king who is blessed, who comes in the name of the Lord. Actually, this week, I think, is the most important week in Christian chronology. Between the Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday. Why? Because everything that Jesus Christ accomplished in over 35 years of life, particularly in the last five years of his ministry, some Bible scholars prefer the timeline of three and a half. However, in this one week, he accomplished more than everything else put together. And why was that important? Because in the book of Exodus, when God began to give the laws of sacrifice, for human redemption. Yes, I understand the laws of redemption started in Genesis chapter 4 where God gave those commandments which Abel accepted and Cain rejected. But in the book of Exodus, when God reintroduced that concept of sacrifice, sacrifices and deliverance or redemption, God told Israelites, you should identify you should mark out a lamb that has to be sacrificed and keep the lamb for four days, inspecting the lamb, checking out the lamb, and then sacrifice it. It was symbolic of Jesus our Lord. And today, Sunday, was the day when Christ identified himself as the sacrificial lamb and walked into Jerusalem saying, I am the lamb of God that has to be sacrificed. Next four days, the Lord Jesus was teaching, answering questions. People asked him about marriage. People asked him about heaven. People asked him about demons and angels. People asked him about how to handle money. They kept inspecting him for four days until the garden of Gethsemane, where he would be handed over as the sacrificial lamb. Four days, they inspected him, which was the culture God had commanded. The Bible says, that Jesus entered into Jerusalem. Oh, I have titled today's message, Enter Your Own Jerusalem. 
Everybody's got a Jerusalem that we got to go once in a while where you got to accomplish what God wants you to accomplish in every season of your life. How did Jesus enter Jerusalem? Whenever somebody who enters Jerusalem enters with the intention of establishing a kingdom. They go on a horseback, on a chariot. They go on an elephant or a camel. These are the, you know, elephants very rarely, mostly horses or camels. These are historic ways in which conquerors entered Jerusalem. Like most of us know, Jerusalem is the most bloody ground in human history. There have been more wars that were fought in Jerusalem than has ever been fought in any other territory on the planet earth. All the conquerors have entered Jerusalem through horses, on horsebacks, or on camels, or big vehicles. Jesus, to fulfill the book of Zechariah chapter 5, I think, the Bible says 520 years before Jesus was born, the Bible says Messiah would enter Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. And the prophet said, it's to show his humility. Now, if somebody by chance was on a horseback, doesn't mean you're humble. It just means you didn't get a better vehicle. In the case of Jesus, it was specifically to show a sense of humility. This king was not coming to establish a kingdom which is political. That's why you have Christians who vote for Democrats and Republicans. Because Christianity does not adopt a political party because Jesus Christ is not a political leader. Every religion has a political connotation. Christianity abstains from political practices. As a religion, it does not support politics simply because Jesus said, my kingdom on this earth is not political. It is spiritual. I don't rule from a place of a throne. I rule from the hearts of people. Hallelujah. We are the only party that doesn't vote. We only believe. Amen. We vote for whoever we want to vote for as we are led by common sense and Holy Spirit in the voting booth. That's a different story. So when Jesus entered, our Lord entered into Jerusalem, the Bible says people cut palm leaves. Palm leaves are a Jewish national symbol. When Solomon had built that beautiful great temple, he engraved palm leaves on the walls of the temple. Palm leaves are historically important in the culture of Israel. And palm trees and palm leaves represent their nationality, their identity. India, we have peacock, tiger, and other things that are symbols apart from the flag. Similarly, Jewish people used to have palm leaves as a sign. And they were waving palm leaves and saying, Hosanna. Hosanna means save us now. The Romans are ruling over us. Hosanna means Jesus, save us now. You are the only one who can bring together Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. Even the Samaritans follow you. Why don't you become the king? And they began to praise him. They began to adore him. They began and to worship him. If you want to succeed in your Jerusalem, number one, develop a reputation. I'll say that again. Develop a reputation. People should know when they see you what they can trust you for. <laughs> they should know what can they think and expect from you. Develop a reputation. The other day, someone invited me for their wedding and they said, Pastor, come for this reception. Don't go for that reception. I got to that reception. Also. Don't come for that. So I said, what happened? I won't come for both. But I'll come for your marriage, conduct your marriage. Both receptions I won't be attending. But anyway, why you don't want me to attend that reception? He said, no, in that reception, my other friends are coming. Said, Which one are they? <laughs> no, my, my friends. I don't drink, but they drink. Then I understood. My reputation precedes me. They know if pastor comes, he'll spoil the party. So don't invite him for that one. Invite him for the other one. 
What is your reputation? Do people call you for programs that you think are bad for you? And is that because you have not established your reputation? Was that a tough question? <laughs> That's called revival. That 12 clapped. That's called... <laughs> Jesus, our Lord, had such a huge reputation and such a huge following. He had such a huge following. In John chapter 12, this is one of the stories that all the four Gospels are harmonious. All, all Gospels are harmonious about all stories, but are speaking different shades of the same story. And the Bible says in the Gospel of John, two kinds of crowds were there. According to historian Josephus, there were a minimum of two and a half to three lakh people. About 300,000 people that were in Jerusalem at that time. According to some other Greek historians, Roman historians, there were about two and a half million, 25 lakh people in Jerusalem at that time. It's assumed that Josephus' history, which is not from the Bible, but is a secular history, is talking about the people who came around Jesus. Could be true, I don't know. But the Bible says there were two kinds of crowds, John chapter 12, two kinds of crowds that came to see Jesus. One, the traditional crowd that were already gathered in Jerusalem for the great feast that was going to happen. A great Sabbath that was going to happen, which was a special Sabbath. And the other crowd was the crowd that came to see Jesus because they heard Lazarus was coming. Everyone wanted to see Lazarus. Who is Lazarus? Everyone knew he died. He was buried for four days. Jesus went to the graveyard and said, Lazarus, come out. And the Bible says, Jesus called Lazarus out from the grave. Sometimes we want Jesus to do a miracle. Right now, Lord, tomorrow will become too late. Lord, if you don't do something this month, next month, I don't know, Lord. There is no use, Lord. If I don't see a miracle, if this guy doesn't marry me, hopeless, it's over, Lord. Sometimes we feel we've hit the dead end and then we seal it and say it's over and we believe there is no future. That's when God comes in and says, hey, I want to begin something new in your life. Hallelujah. My God has a way of throwing surprises. My God has a way of doing something new where there is nothing. He sends his word and does a miracle. Today, do you get the word of God? If you do, then God is able to do something new in your life. The Holy Bible says Jesus had raised Lazarus and Lazarus was coming with Jesus. And there was a big crowd to see Lazarus. How is Lazarus doing when he came out of the grave? Are his hands still working? Is his eyesight normal? Is his hearing okay? When God raised him back from the dead, is his backbone still working or is that frozen and dead? When Christ raised somebody, everything comes alive. <laughs> Hallelujah. They had come to see Lazarus. When God does something in your life, they will not only come because of your reputation, but they'll come because of God's reputation in your life. They want to see what has God done in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. When you talk about leadership, there are two qualities that are indispensable for genuine leadership. I'm not talking about political leadership. I'm not talking about uh, monarchy leadership, that is kings and queens that come because of entitlement. Sometimes stupid people get elected. I don't have to give you any reference from other countries. You know, because we read world news. <laughs> I'm talking about genuine leadership. Because in political leadership, in uh, uh, leaderships of crowns and kingdoms, in, in leaderships where there is a sense of entitlement. Uh, that's positional leadership. That's positionally, it's not functional leadership. Functional leadership requires a minimum of two things. One is integrity. Integrity means what you say is what you do and people know it. 
And you know it for yourself. There is no gap between what you speak and how you live. What people see on the outside of you is really who you are on the inside. Am I helping anybody here? The highest level of integrity is usually in families, between parents and children, between uh, functional homes, uh, spouses, husband and wife. Those, those are the places where you have almost highest levels of integrity, where hypocrisy is minimal. But in the society, usually integrity is very poor because there's one thing that is expressed on the outside, another thing that is thought through, believed, felt on the inside. But in genuine leadership, the two components, number one is integrity. And second is communication. The ability to express oneself is very important. And the Lord Jesus had mastered these things in his earthly journey. Most of the relational success in your life, if you really look at it, <clears throat> if you really look at your life, most of your success comes from these two components whether in formal relationships or in social relationships. Your success really comes from how you're able to be a person of integrity and how you're able to express yourself in a way that is meaningful. Sometimes people express themselves with a lot of anger, hatred, jealousy, negativity. But sometimes they have learned how to express themselves with a sense of genuineness, a sense of more higher integrity. Maybe they are disturbed, but they know how to put it across without violating sense of decency. And I think this is so very important. When we look at how the Lord Jesus entered into Jerusalem, the two things you don't want to forget is in leadership, whether you're leading your family or you're leading just yourself. If you can't have respect for yourself, why would you want others to respect you? We got to live our life in a way that we can respect ourselves. And then, yes, of course, you know others are going to value you because you communicate your life and you have a sense of integrity in your life which does not defeat the greater purpose of your life. Jesus was known to lead huge crowds because of his relationships with people and not because of his position. Look at the crowds. They're crying, Hosanna to the king. Hosanna to the king. Jesus knew this was the moment I can win this election. But did Jesus stand for that election? No, he didn't. Why? Because he was focused. He kept his integrity. He kept his value system. And this is so important. The Lord Jesus was not even a priest in the temple. He was not a prophet from the prophetic class. He was not a ruler from the ruling dispensation, whether of the Romans or the Jews. Yet, crowds followed Jesus. When the high priest would come into Jerusalem, no one would wave even a handkerchief. But when Jesus entered, <laughs> entire atmosphere was different. They knew Jesus was coming. I tell you, man, your reputation is so good. In your area of work over the year, reputation doesn't happen overnight. It takes time to build, but it can continue to build in such a way. Some of you are thinking, pastor, in my office, they've destroyed my reputation. Pastor, in my family, they've destroyed my, re in the college, they've spoiled my reputation, pastor. Pastor, social media destroyed my life. Look at me. Let me tell you one thing. They can destroy, but they cannot take away. When God starts building your reputation, no one can destroy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If somebody is against your reputation, don't worry. Your pastor has gone through it. Your master has gone beyond it. And the Lord is able. The Lord is able. The Lord, oh, come on, somebody give the, the Lord is. Hallelujah. What the devil tears down. I'm not saying TV9 is devil. I'm, I'm not, I, that is different. I'm saying what the devil tears down, God will rebuild. Face your Jerusalem. Because there is resurrection waiting for you. Hallelujah.
Jesus never tried to run and hide. He walked straight into Jerusalem saying, I am the sacrificial lamb. I have come to die on the cross. Told his disciples, in four days, I'm going to be dead, but I'll come back to life. Who wants such a master? Nobody. Because till then, all who died never came back. So the, Peter's point is, Lord, now you start kingdom and go. Because in case you don't come back, you start the whole thing. If somebody says, I'm going to die, I'll come back and stand next election. Who's going to believe? That is the exact situation of Jesus. When he says, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. Disciples are saying, Master, can we change that topic? Once you die, you're gone. Adios. It's over. Can you do something when you're alive? No, I'll come back. <laughs> God, it happens only in the movies. It can't happen in real life. Jesus says, no, I'm coming back. Because Jesus understood human nature. If you want to face life, you have to understand fellow humans. I know python, I know sap, I know medicine. See, <laughs> you may be living in a concrete jungle, but there are other human animals around you. And unless we learn how to handle those, leadership can be challenging. How did Jesus respond? He responded with focus. When they all said, Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus knew four days from today, they are going to be crying with the same volume, crucify him, crucify him. He knew, but he didn't show any anger. When they were praising him, he accepted the praise, knowing that the same fellows are going to shout, crucify him. And I have to accept that also. <laughs> Don't get shocked when people change. People will change. What's the proof? Look in the mirror. <laughs> change is the constant in life. But we respond with focus like Jesus did. Jesus was so focused on the cross that when they gave him the throne of a king, he said, no, the cross is my destiny. The Bible says, they shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna. How do you differentiate between a living fish and a dead fish? Very easy. When you look at a river, a dead fish will be floating along with the flow of the river. But living fish, he'll be swimming in the direction he wants to go. When you look at the people who are dead in sin, you know it because they are floating with the culture. But the ones who are alive in Christ are not afraid to go against the flow. Jesus went against the flow. Our Lord went against the flow. He didn't go in the direction that people were taking him. He went in the direction God was leading him. His father was leading him. A lack, you know, sometimes lack of discernment can destroy our purpose from God. We, sh we should not get carried away with extra praises or get depressed with extra criticism. Both will happen in human life. Yeah, 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 yeah. The same fellow who says, darling, you are so beautiful. And he's mesmerized and he couldn't drink his tea because he couldn't blink. <laughs> and, and you are on the cloud, just engrossed. Even you never knew you are so beautiful. You just don't want to go out of his eyeballs. You are so mesmerized with yourself and your reflection in his black, beautiful eyes. Get married. <laughs> you will get new definitions of who you are from his lips. Vice versa. Discern human nature. If we have to be successful, Palm Sunday tells you one thing, be like Jesus. Discern human nature and don't get carried away with both, either to be excited or to be disappointed. Be happy when people appreciate you, of course, but don't allow yourself to go too low when they criticize you. And the elders were rebuking Jesus, saying, tell your disciples to shut up. Trust me, even at the height of your blessing, there will be somebody who is irritating you. 
I didn't ask for an amen, but see the way, yes, amen, hallelujah, sir, come, because you feel God is speaking. <laughs> Even when I spoke about tithes, God was speaking. <laughs> the one thing that stops us from rising up to where God wants us to go, the one thing that stops us, there are other things, but I want to touch this one thing that stops us from where God wants us to rise. On this Palm Sunday, make a decision. God, I won't be led by fear. I'll be led by the vision you have given me for my life. I'll be led by your call. Hallelujah. Sometimes, sometimes God calls you for something small. And you feel, oh my God, that's too small. I can't take it up. How will I build a future with that? Don't be afraid. Obedience is better. I have, I have written down something here. Scripture. God's word is more trustworthy than popular opinion. Did you get that? God's word is more trustworthy than popular opinion. Amen. Don't be afraid of change. Because there is a resurrection waiting for you beyond your comfort zone. Everybody wants to be comfortable. And that's not wrong. But sometimes you've got to go through the grind. And don't blame God there. Praise God there. Because there is a resurrection waiting for you. Hallelujah. Sometimes our enemies don't come from the outside. Sometimes they come from the inside. Sometimes they come from both places. You're already rejecting yourself. That's when others also reject you. Hmm. Appraisal came. Everyone got a hike. Only you didn't get a hike. You feel rejected. Or appraisal came, everyone got a hike, so you're upset. Only I should have got a hike. Rejection can happen at different levels. Habits can sometimes stop you from where God is taking you. Habits. You want to change your habit, but you're not able to. Habits are holding you back. Habits that you know are weakening your life. Unbelief can sometimes be a strange factor that pulls down the efficiency of your life. For some people, it is anger which is expressed. And for some others, it is anger which is burning on the inside. you got to treat your anger like you treat wounds of the body. Medicate it. Take care of it. Don't ignore it. Deal with it. Overcome it. <laughs> Sometimes it is vain desires. Desires that are actually useless. You know it's useless. These are things that can stop you from your Jerusalem. Jesus decided if I go on a horse, the Romans will attack me. The Greeks will come and question me. The Pharisees and the Jews will really get excited and make me a king. And he said, I'll take my trip on a donkey. Because there's no point in fighting battles that are not a part of your calling. Take a method, take a vehicle, take an approach that will help you reach your destiny. Don't take something which will stop you and bring unwanted resistance on the way. While our eyes are closed and heads are bowed, shall we say, Lord, on this Palm Sunday, thank you for your wisdom. You've called us to face our Jerusalem. And we understand that it may not be physical death for us. For you, Lord Jesus, it was about dying on the cross and coming back again alive after three days. But for us, it's not about physical death. But it's about a variety of challenges that we have to face in our daily life. Help us, O oh God, to face our Jerusalem. Understanding that the challenges we face are only exams we write for the next promotion you have kept in store for us. Hallelujah. Everybody here, shall we take a minute to say, Lord, this month I commit my life. No more running away from my challenges. If it's something you want me to fight, I'm going to win over it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Wherever you're seated, wherever you're standing, would you like to speak out that prayer to God saying, God, I rededicate my life to following your call, to following your purpose, to following your plan for my life. Thank you, Lord. On a Palm Sunday, 2,000 years ago, thank you for facing your Jerusalem.
Thank you, God, that you became a human, a human and a servant to the very death on the cross. You being God, you died like a human. Thank you. Thank you that you who raised yourself by your Holy Spirit from the grave, that you are able to rise us up from wherever we may be buried. Thank you that there is a future, an effective future for all who trust in you. Hallelujah. 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 Help us, O oh Father, to be wise in the choices that we make so that nothing will distract us from the greater call of becoming more effective and successful, becoming overcomers by your grace. Protect us from fighting wrong battles. Help us, O oh God, that we don't get distracted by battles which are not a part of our calling. Thank you for your healing touch. Some of us that are wounded, that are hurt, that are broken, and we pray that you will heal every heart. Hallelujah. Today there would be a healing upon their lives. Some of us who've succeeded in some areas and are enjoying the pleasures and the benefits and the profits of those success, give us wisdom, Lord, that we will invest our success that we will invest, we'll be guided on how to handle our victory by your Holy Spirit. Thank you for speaking to us today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and the people said, Amen. Go ahead, give the Lord a big hand, shall we? <laughs> Savior, like a shepherd lead us, much we need thy tender care. In that blessing pastures feed us For our use thy folds prepare Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus Thou hast bought us that we are Blessed Thou befriend us, be the guardian of the way. Keep thy thoughts in defend us. Seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed See 
lift our hands as we sing it. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast loved us, thou hast still. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast loved us. Go ahead, church. Let's give the Lord a mighty hand. Take a few minutes. Shout out your Hosanna to Him. Wave out your faith. Wave your commitment to Him. Like they lifted up the palm leaves. Lift up your voices to Jesus. Hallelujah. Take a few minutes to open our mouth and praise Him for some time. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be breakthrough in every life, O oh God, that we will face our Jerusalem. This month, every Sunday, we're going to get stronger in our faith. We're going to be overcomers. Every challenge we overcome by the power of your Holy Spirit. Go ahead, somebody. Lift up your voice. Clap your hands. Thank Him. Praise Him. Make it your Hosanna Sunday. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for speaking into our hearts today through your word. Lord, as your word says that your word is a lamp to our feet and light unto our hearts. Lord, as we face, Lord, the, the daily challenges and uncertainties of our life, we thank you that we are not alone, that your presence is by our side. Thank you, Lord, for the divine grace and the strength that you have poured into our lives to face our Jerusalem with absolute focus, with grace, with your wisdom. We thank you, Lord, that the one who lives in us is greater than the one who is in the world. We worship you today. We praise you today. Father, we pray for those who are here for the very first time. Thank you so much that you brought them here into your presence. In the name of Jesus, we speak your blessings upon their lives. May their lives never be the same again. We pray for those who are celebrating their birthdays, their marriage anniversaries this week. Thank you for adding another year into their life. We pray that the years ahead will be blessed, be fruitful by you. Lord, we pray for those who are traveling this week. May your divine presence go with them. Father, we also pray for the tithes and the offering that people have given to you. Bless the hands that has given. Lord, your word says that you will never hold back any blessings from us. We pray for your divine supply upon each one of their lives. Lord, as we prepare our hearts to, Lord, spend time in your presence and fasting in prayer, this week we pray that you would renew us, that you would strengthen us from the inside to the out for the glory of your name. We give you all the glory, worship, and praise. In Jesus' most holy name we pray. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus, the love of our Heavenly Father, and the sweet abiding presence of the Holy Spirit rest and be with us from now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Before we could, we could leave, we want to take this time to welcome all of you who are here for the very first time. Those who are watching us online today, come on, give them a very warm welcome. Those who are here, we would love to meet you in a guest lounge that is outside to my right hand side. And pastors are here right in the front as well as in the overflow. God bless you. Have a blessed week.